In this lecture, we are going to discuss the physical infrastructure in India's post reform era. The brief line, brief outline of the presentation will be uh, a discussion, a short discussion on economic reforms and then we will try to find out how uh, after the economic reforms, railways, roadways, ports, civil aviation, electricity and telecommunication received a new type of uh, investment and uh, how different models of uh, public private partnership was also implemented. Uh, let me begin with uh, what was the basically the main uh, features of the economic uh, reforms in India. One cannot really forget the new industrial policy announced in 1991 in July, uh, which has uh, really, uh, really attempt to, uh, really attempt to have the private participation uh, from the uh, from the industry list. Uh, industries which were uh, in the complete control of the government, uh, they were made free for the private sector. A apart from the few industries uh, which were kept uh, in the government. Uh, uh, in the government control. Most of the industries in India were kept out from the complete control of the government. So, this is the first time when India realized a new type of uh, industrialization. Uh, uh, from 1948 to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to the begin, beginning of the 1991 industrial policy regime, we found that India has continued with a very restricted industrial policy and this type of industrial policy is named as the very inward looking industrial policy. It was the 2000, it was the 1991 which has looked for the very outward looking industrialization model which was well argued by Trodero, Pangaria, Jagdish Bhagwati and many other economists. Uh, and uh, uh, a major part of that industrial policy was well supported by the trade liberalization uh, adopted by India after 1991. Uh, import tariff were uh, reduced, uh, restrictions on uh, export and import were uh, downside, uh, downsized and at the same time uh, at, the, at, at the domestic, uh, in, the, in the domestic uh, industrial atmosphere also the industries which were and the enterprises which were completely controlled by the government, government has started disinvesting and depending on the private sector. Evolution of the MRTP Act in 19 which was the old act of 1969 and the government of India has implemented the new act of the competition and uh, it came in 2002. Uh, we do had uh, the new telecom policy announced in 1999 which has really worked on uh, inviting the foreign direct investment and opening up the telecom sector for the private people, finding the new partners in the telecom services. At the same time, as a part of trade liberalization, government of India do announce the export import policy and the very liberal setup of FDI policy was also announced uh, in different sectors. So, this is the general, uh, uh, general steps taken by the uh, government in 1991 uh, and after that. And uh, we do find that the infrastructure in reform India uh, was taken more seriously compared to the infrastructure uh, progress, infrastructure development in the pre-reform India. So, India realized the need of infrastructure development to attract and exploit growth opportunities first time very seriously and at the same time with the growing urbanization and migration, migration it became more imperative, imperative for India uh, to achieve new targets in the infrastructure. Uh, PPP model uh, being practiced in the roads, bridge and other urban infrastructure development. FDI in many infra projects became easy and government came and government do played a very important role as a new uh, uh, partner in facilitating the infrastructure product, uh, uh, projects and it has reduced the restrictions in many subsectors of infrastructure. So, the need for private invest investment was, was realized because uh, it was the year in 1991 was the year when uh, government in India and government in many developing countries were started thinking to come out from, from the producer of many uh, goods and services and they were really looking, uh, started looking for the partners in production of varieties of infrastructure and varieties of uh, manufacturing activity. So, in a reform environment, environment, India attempted to have adequate infrastructure that includes electric, pow electric uh, power, road and rail connectivity, telecommunication, air transports and ports 
and Indian economy which was much bigger economy continued its backwardness in infrastructure compared to many smaller economies of Asia in the early phase of reforms. So, uh, government initiatives for infrastructure development may be summarized as the infrastructure development finance company was set up in January 1997 with authorized capital of with authorized capital of 5000 crores. The government announced tax holiday uh, to companies developing maintenance and operating infrastructure facilities such as roads, bridges, new ports, etc. The government has permitted income tax exemption on dividend, interest or long term capital gains earned by funds or companies set up to develop, maintain and operate infrastructure facility. So, these are the uh, one can say the policy announcement, policy support uh, which was very much practical for uh, infrastructure development in the post reform India. At the same time we also found that the government has raised uh, corpus of National Highway Authority of India Limited with uh, 200 crore to enable its to leverage funds for domestic funds in international capital markets. The government has announced various measures to attract foreign investment in infrastructure. The expert group on commercialization of ex, uh, infrastructure has also recommended to uh, for setting up of uh, autonomous regulatory bodies for each infrastructure sector on lines of SEBI to ensure competition among public and private operators and to protect consumer interest. So, railways which was uh, one of the main sector for uh, uh, public investment until today we found that uh, it is a it is a sector which uh, has really protected by the government. It has been the major means of uh, transportation of passengers as well as the freight in the country uh, that needs modernization and capacity building. So, private participation is is now allowed more recently in railways since the opening of FDI in rail transport in 2014. No specific investment proposed has been received till now, but the private investment worth approximately 10,000 crore have been committed for 19 projects under different mod mo models. So, 100 percent FDI is allowed in 2014 through automatic route in railway infrastructure for construction, operating and maintenance in the following area. So, suburban corridors projects through PPP, high speed train projects, dedicated uh, freight lines and rolling stock train sets, locomotives and coaches manufacturing and maintenance. Railway electrification, uh, signaling system, uh, freight terminals, passengers terminals, railway connectivity to industrial parks, mass rapid transports where the areas where FTI were allowed. In terms of railway route electri electrification, uh, in the reform period, we uh, do find that the uh, route uh, which is electrified uh, was, uh, 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 was uh, 18,559 in 2008-9 uh, 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 which, was, which was only 9,969 in 1990-91 at the time of economic reforms. So, we can say that uh, uh, in, in, in in 20 years time, around 20 years time, India has achieved just uh, double, uh, uh, double growth in terms of uh, electrification of routes in terms of kilometers. In terms of roads, road transport has emerged as dominant segment with a share of 4.7 percent in India GDP in 2009-10, which is higher than the railway that has 1 percent share. So, the National Highway Authority of India is responsible for the development, maintenance and uh, management of national highway in the country as I have also uh, presented a case study of uh, national highway authority of India in our previous in my previous lecture. So, government initiatives were also uh, uh, well supported for this type of uh, uh, road construction activity FTI up to 100 percent is allowed in road construction and development through automatic route. To encourage participation of private sector the government has announced several in incentives like tax incentives and duty free import of road building equipments and machinery etcetera. Government of India identified rural roads as one of the six components of Bharat Nirman with a goal to provide connectivity to all habitants with a population of 1000 persons and above in plain areas and 5 percent persons and above in hilly or tribal area within all weather roads. National Highway Development Program uh, the investment was uh, 2,36,247 crore uh, was made uh, between 2005 uh, to 2012 Pradhan Mantri Gram Sarak Yojana a centrally sponsored scheme launched in 
2000 to empower rural India through a strategic provision of all season road access. Pradhan Mantri uh, Gram Sarak Yojana has a strong national focus for rural roads development through National Rural Development Agency and uh, National Rural Development Agency has developed a common set of operating procedures that are applied nationwide through dedicated state rural road development agency. Development of road networks if one can compare uh, between the uh, initiation of the economic reform process in 1991 and the development by 2011, we find out that National Highway uh, has uh, reached to the level of 70,934 uh, state highways, uh, 16 lakh, uh, 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 1,63,898 uh, and the rural roads uh, 2 lakh 74,000, uh, 2 lakh 74,000, uh, 20, 27 lakh uh, 49,805 while the urban roads uh, are being constructed uh, has reached to the level of uh, 40, uh, 44 lakh 11,840 uh, in the uh, year of 2011, which was hardly 1 lakh 86,799 at the time of economic reforms in 1991. In terms of expressways, uh, around 200 uh, length in kilometers were developed as the expressways. National Highway, as discussed, 92,000. 851 kilometer state highways 1,31,899 kilometer major district roads 4,67,766 and total length is 33 lakhs approx uh, which is the current uh, uh, which is the present scenario in the road. In terms of ports under reforms Indian uh, Indian ports witnessed the reforms process during the decade of 1990s. The tariff authority for major, major ports was established in 1997 as an independent authority to regulate vessel and cargo tariff and decides the rates of the lease of, of the properties. Domestic and foreign private sectors participation in major Indian ports were announced by the Ministry of Surface Transport in 1996. India adopted landlord port model of the World Bank which I have also discussed during my previous presentation. So, this is distinguishing between the port owner and the port operator. Concession agreement was based on the BOT scheme of the POP in the port sector. So, uh, in uh, uh, Nord near Chennai was the first uh, corporate port established in 2001. Existing major ports were also decided to corporatize progressively by better functioning on the commercial principles. Compound annual growth rate was 7.3% between 1994 to 95 to 2008-9 for the uh, for the traffic uh, handed at major ports. There are currently 12 major ports in India. In terms of public expenditure, the eight plan had 3,556 crore rupees as the outlay, while the expenditure was 2,302 uh, crore rupees. Uh, in ninth plan, around uh, 5,316 crore rupees was the expenditure. Uh, at the same time in the 10th plan, uh, 2,893 crore rupees was the expenditure on ports development. In 11th plan, 6,948, while in the 10th, 12th plan, 15,764 crore rupees was allotted for the uh, ports development. Traffic handled by the ports in India has also shown a quite improved uh, data. Major ports uh, which were having around 200 uh, 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 traffic now it has increased to the 581 while the minor ports which was uh, handling 18 uh, now it has increased to 471. So, in, in case of civil aviation policy open sky act 1990 airport authority of India act 1994 private scheduled airlines operator operators uh, was permitted in 1995 entry of low cost carriers introduced in 2003 and major mergers, mergers initiated in 2007. 
Airports Economic Authority, Regulatory Authority of India Act 2008 established the Airports Economic Regulatory Authority. It regulates tariff and other uh, aeronautical charges uh, and monitors airport performance standards. 100 percent FDI is allowed in greenfield projects and at the same time uh, 100 percent FDI, FDI is also allowed in other projects. Uh, automatic route is six, 74 percent. The sector has been an unprecedented growth in recent years. Uh, in public sector, there, there is Air India and its subsidiaries like Airlines Air and Air India Charters Limited. In private sector, six private scheduled operators such as Jet Airways, Jetline, uh, Go Air, SpiceJet, Indigo, Paramount Airways are operating. Director General of Civil Aviation is the regulatory body uh, in the civil aviation sector. Traditionally, uh, uh, AAI was responsible for development, maintenance and ownership of airport facilities in country. While opening of the private sector, now six airports are under the PPP mode and these are Hyderabad, Bangalore, Delhi, Mumbai, Cochin and Nagpur. Currently under PPP mode, 60 percent air traffic is handled and rest, rest is by the uh, airport authority of India. Government initiated in energy sector. The electricity bill 2014 has been introduced to promote competition and efficiency in the operation and improving the quality of the supply of electricity. Electricity generation of 793.73 billion units achieved for April to December 2014 with respect to the target 765.39 billion units. Integrated power development schemes launched to reduce technical and commercial losses which establishes IT enabled energy and improve collective efficiency. Din Dial Upadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana was also launched. So, National Mission on Energy Efficiency to improve energy efficiency in all areas of the economy including transport, urban housing, consumer goods and industries and the Rajiv Gandhi Gramin Vidyuti Karan Yojana April 2005 for village electrification and connection of rural households to supply electricity was also one of the prime uh, uh, prime program which has enhanced the electricity consumption in the rural area. If one can see here the state wise consumption of electricity, uh, in India it is the commercial sector uh, and the industry uh, which really uh, consumes uh, more, more electricity. Uh, agriculture uh, do consume 18 percent of the electricity and that shows that backwardness of agriculture uh, in terms of electricity consumption. Uh, in case of household energy consumption, uh, the electricity, uh, the percentage of electricity is 75.5 percent in total while the LPG is 31.2 percent as a part of uh, household energy access in 2009-10. Uh, we find out there is a slight improvement in the LPG uh, access, energy access, 8.7 percent in rural and 57.8 percent in urban which has in improved from 8 percent to 15.5 percent in rural and 66.2 percent in urban. So, uh, uh, we find here that uh, there are certain challenges in the energy sector. India is the fourth largest consumer of energy in the world. Due to limited production, it depends on the imports. Meeting energy requirements at affordable price is a major, major challenge. Over 70 percent of electricity is generated from coal based power plants and India faces a significant challenge in providing access to adequate, affordable and clean sources of energy. As per census 2011, 85 percent of rural households were dependent on biomass fuel. In case of telecommunication, uh, which is emerged as the key driver of economic and social development in global scenario, we find here that there are reforms in telecommunication. Telecom manufacturing equ equipment license was abolished in 1991, foreign collaboration of 54 51 percent was allowed by automatic route. National telecom policy 1994 was uh, announced by the government. It opened basic telecom services for private participation including foreign investment. TRAI telecom regulatory authority of India was also established by the telecom regulatory authority of India act 1997 to regulate the tariff and other telecom services. Telecom was given the status of infrastructure to avail the benefits and incentives of the government like tax holiday and others. So, during April, November 
2014-15 we found that 31.2 million new telephone connections were added. Overall tele density has increased from 75.23 percent at the beginning of April 2014 to 77.12 at the end of November 2014. These are the new data uh, uh, which shows the growing tele density. Tele density. Uh, and Department of Telecommunication has planned to connect all 250,000 uh, gram panchayats with minimum 100 Mbps bandwidth under the national optical optical fiber network projects. And uh, India has a really in, in case of digital, uh, in case of uh, tele density, uh, it has improved a, a lot, uh, not only uh, uh, not only from the period of independence, but also from the beginning of economic reforms in 1991. Uh, growth of subscribers, one can see here in, uh, in, in 2009, uh, it was uh, 429 millions, which has now reached to the uh, new, uh, new level and now around plus 90 million people are having the uh, uh, telephone connectivity. Uh, plus 90 crore population is having the telephone connectivity. To conclude, after the reforms, India has allowed private participation in different sectors for the development of infrastructure. There is wide variation in private investment in different sectors. Some sectors like ports, roads and telecom has been the more attractive compared to other sectors of physical infrastructure. And this shows that how there is a growing need for more private participation in the development of physical infrastructure. Uh, to sum up the entire discussion, uh, one can only say that uh, in the past few years after the economic reforms, uh, we do have new sources of investment from the FDI, from FII, and we have different models of implementation in the infrastructure sector. But at the same time, we do not find a, a, a proper uh, uh, we do not find a, a proper equilibrium in the investment in, in different sectors. So, uh, when we are uh, moving ahead in case, of, uh, in case of infrastructure development, the past lessons are very important to, uh, to, to understand. And uh, uh, like, the, like the, uh, a, a good example of telecommunication, we do have to set the new examples in electricity, we do have to set the new examples in roads and ports and other, other infrastructure sector. Uh, I hope this discussion will, uh, will give you a wide range of uh, idea that how economic reforms which was supported and added by the government policy in different sectors has really made India a new India and improved India, a reform India and which is now ready to get some more funds, some more facilities in infrastructure development. Thank you.